Welcome to Daughters of India. In our last episode, Anaya spoke about Daughter of the Dust, Aruna Roy. This Sunday, I, Ikshu Shinde, will be speaking about Ahilya Bai Holkar, the philosopher queen. Hatshepsut is famous as the Egyptian queen who patronized arts. The Assyrian queen, Samramat, is known for fighting many wars, building a new capital, and influencing lands far and wide. Isabella, the Queen of Spain, is famous for bringing together an empire full of noblemen and streamlining the government machinery. These names, from times distant and lands far, get repeated in listicles and history throwbacks. Devi Ahilya Bai Holkar, who had most of these achievements to her repertoire, and then some more, is a name largely unknown to most Indians, let alone in global history compilations. Devi Ahilya Bai ruled the province of Malwa for 28 years before she died and created a strong local administration, overcoming the 18th century disadvantage of gender. Taking over as the Queen of Malwa, after all the male favorites to the throne had died, she stands out as a strong ruler, spreading the message of dharma, rejuvenating Hinduism, and promoting the relatively modern virtues of small-scale industrialization. Born on May 31st, 1725, in the village of Tsondi in Zamkir, Ahilyabai did not belong to a royal lineage. However, her entry into royalty is nothing short of a twist of fate. It was when Marha Rao Hulkar, an acclaimed nobleman in the Marwa territory, spotted an eight-year-old Ahilyabai at a temple service, feeding the hungry and poor while on his way to Pune. Immensely moved by the young girl's act of kindness and strength of character, he decided to ask her hand in marriage for his son, Khandira Holkar. Ahilya Bai was married to Khandira Holkar in 1733 at the tender age of eight. Distress soon befell the young bride when her husband was killed at the Battle of Kumbhar in 1754, leaving her a widow at only 29. But she was forbidden from committing sati by her father-in-law, who became her strongest pillar of support at the time. The kingdom felt a strong vacuum when Marha Rao passed away, soon followed by her young son. Ahilya Bai, however, stood undeterred through all her personal losses that occurred in quick succession. She decided to take matters into her own hands for the sake of the administration of the kingdom and the lives of her people. After petitioning the Peshwa after her son's untimely death, she ascended the throne and became ruler of Indore on 11th December 1767. The Queen of Malwa was not only a brave queen and a skilled ruler, but also a learned politician. Her observation of the British and their agenda was something even the Maratha Peshwa had missed noticing. In a letter written to the Peshwa in 1772, she threw caution to the wind and said, Other beasts like tigers can be killed by might or consequence, but to kill a bear, it is very difficult. It will die only if you kill it straight in the face, or once caught in its powerful hold, the bear will kill its prey by tickling. Such is the way of the British, and given this, it is difficult to triumph over them. Indore prospered during her rule from a tiny village to a flourishing city. Ahilya Bai is famous for having built numerous forts and roads in the Malwa region, sponsoring festivals and offering donations to many Hindu temples. Her philanthropy reflected in the building of numerous temples, ghats, wells, tanks and rest houses stretching across the length and breadth of the country. Her kingdom's capital, Maheshwar, was a melting pot of music and culture. She is known to have opened doors to stalwarts like Marathi poet Murupant, Shahi Anantafandi and Sanskrit scholar Kushali Ram. The capital was also known for its distinct craftsmen, sculptors and artists who are paid handsomely for their work. The Queen also established a textile industry in the city. 
Historians have also noted how she encouraged all within her kingdom's boundaries to do their best at whatever they took on. Far and wide, roads were planted with shady trees, wells were dug, and rest houses for travelers were built. The poor, the homeless, and the orphaned were all helped according to their needs. The queen died at the age of 70 after an almost 30 year rule, but the brave and just queen's legacy lives on in the form of the number of temples, dharamshalas, and the large amount of social work that she dedicated her life to. Ahilya Devi Holkar inspires me to utilize my privileges and opportunities as mediums for the betterment of the lives of the needy and underprivileged around me. She channeled her grief into service, her pain into empathy. I am touched, moved and inspired by her personality as a visionary who is both courageous and compassionate. It is no wonder that she is referred to as Punya Shlok.